Good morning, everybody. Um, I would just like to encourage you just with a short message today. Today we're not going to have a web church uh, meeting, so um, I was just thinking before I leave for the service, uh, the last service of the conference here in Tulsa, I would just like to just encourage you with a short word um, about the kinsman redeemer, uh, talking about the redemption that there is in Jesus Christ. You know, God has come to bring redemption for us, and we don't always understand what that redemption is all about. And when we look at what this redemption is all about, it, we're going to find that this redemption has got everything to do with um, God taking vengeance on that which destroys us. You know, when we think of a redeemer, we think of somebody that is just full of love and kind and smile, and he's come to redeem us. But that's not the context <coughs> uh, wherein we should understand redemption. I want to read a passage uh, for you um, or to you from um, Hosea and uh, Greg Andrew and I we were talking about this and this is just so beautiful I went uh, and just studied out the King's, Kinsman's Redeemer and what it is all about and this is what the Bible says here um, he says in Hosea 13 verse 14 he says I will ransom them from the power of the grave um, I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. And repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Now what does all of that mean? And what, is, what has all of that got to do with... Um, uh, uh, I see John says, I, 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 he says, he says you know, I wish... Uh, I know you couldn't resist 10 minutes this morning. Well, you're right. I couldn't resist just preaching at least for 10 minutes this morning. So um, <clears throat> what he says here is that he will come and buy, um, and the power of grave that has come to kill us, the power of the grave that has come to, to take a hold of us, he's come to plague that and destroy the power of death. That is what he has come to do. So, um, and then he, he uses the word redeem here. And let me read it again. I will redeem them from death. And then a colon explaining what redemption from death is. Means, and then he says, this is redemption from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. So he says there that uh, a death he will destroy death. That's what he's come to do. And he says, I will redeem you. And then through that redemption, I will destroy you. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about the redemption. Because uh, the, the title of this is that uh, God is your closest family. What do you, why do I say God is closest family? The word redeem, uh, let me read to you what the word redeem there means. The word redeem means to redeem as a kinsman redeemer, an avenger or to revenge. So when God comes in as a kinsman's redeemer, uh, this is how it worked. If a Jew was sold to someone else and um, in that selling to someone else, he became a slave or he couldn't uh, do business well and he lost everything, he became poor, and then he goes and works for someone else. Um, and the context is especially for another nation. And he's a slave to that nation. And that slave owner ill-treats him and beats him to death. Then the Jews had this right to send a kinsman's redeemer. This kinsman's redeemer could come and he could pay money and buy the guy back should he obviously be alive. But if he was not alive, if he was beaten or ill-treated to the point of death, then the kinsman's redeemer, which um, had to be a male that is the closest family member, the closest family member. So the, the closest family member would then come and they would uh, redeem with either pay, or in the case if he was beaten to death, then the closest family member would I had the right to revenge, to take out revenge or destruction or avenge, revenge um, and act as a kinsman's redeemer which would be to take a sword and to kill the slave owner. So, and God comes and he says here, he says, Death, my people willfully sold themselves to you to work for you and you killed them. 
and I am the kinsman's redeemer. I am their closest family member. And God is your closest family member, and that's why he, Jesus is called the redeemer. You know the closest family you have is Jesus. There is no closer family than Jesus. God regards himself as your closest family member. That would be father, uh, that would be brother, that would be the closest you can have. God comes and you are his closest family member. Therefore he comes and he says, since my people sold themselves uh, and, and, and by free will went, because that's what our slavery worked back in that, those days as well, by free will sold himself to somebody of another country or another nation, and that man ill-treated, he could not pay, he could not reward, he could not enrich my family member, that's what God says, and he actually killed, he went, he, he went and he, he actually killed that, that uh, uh, family uh, um that person and then God says I will avenge that I will take revenge I am gonna kill death I'm gonna destroy death I'm gonna destroy the law system that's what I'm gonna destroy I'm gonna destroy what cannot pay you and I will bring you back to where you belong to the place of family the seat in the Trinity and let us end this off with looking at Jesus Christ and how he has redeemed us he came to this earth he took death upon him and he destroyed death. He said no to death. He said no to sin in the physical body. And what he said is, sin and death, you know what? I'll destroy you by taking all of you upon me. And then I will take all people's sin, all people's death upon me. And then I will be raised from the grave. And if I'm raised from the grave, what that means is I completely killed death. I completely destroyed, utterly destroyed the sentence of sin in the flesh and I give eternal life as a free gift and he comes and he is called the Redeemer. He has redeemed us. He hasn't just paid a price for us. Remember that the law system killed us. So paying a price was not the thing. He couldn't pay a ransom to get us free. Pay a price. He had to come and avenge, bring forth judgment, bring forth justice, bring forth um, vengeance upon the system that destroys us. And he came in with a sword and he chopped off the head of death by giving us life and immortality as a free gift. And the only one that could do this was the closest family member, the closest family member. And in our case, it is God himself. Isn't that absolutely awesome? Glory to God. Your closest family member is not your mother or your father or your child or your son or your daughter. Because none of them could perform the kinsman's redemption for you. The closest family member to you is God himself. He's closer than a brother. He's closer than your father. He's closer than your mother. He is the closest family member ever. And he came and redeemed us from death and gave us a place in the Godhead. Glory to God. Well, um, I'm on my way to the service in, uh, in Tulsa at uh, uh, Grace United's last uh, uh, session in this conference. And then this evening, I will be preaching. I'll put all, I'll put all the... Um, uh, Gerald, I see you watching. Please send me all the information there on where I need to be at what time and all those kind of things. And I will put it up on Facebook and just share with all you guys that are in the Tulsa area. Uh, please then uh, 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 this Sunday, this Sunday evening, this evening, come out to the house where we're going to gather all of our web church people and uh, just fellowship. And I'm going to preach a little bit of on uh, life and immortality. It's going to be awesome. See you guys tonight. God bless.